Tradition began with the inaugural Battle for the Spring House, bringing basketball inside the Grand Colonial Hall for the first time for a setting that is truly unmatched. Now it's time for an encore as some of the top high school teams in the Mountain State return to this hallowed venue for year number two. The field this year features the best of the best, with four girls' powers and four boys' powers from every corner of the state going to battle with the ultimate goal of bringing the Spring House Trophy back to their schools. The competition will be fierce, but this weekend is about more than basketball. It's a chance for these student athletes to experience one of West Virginia's true treasures. It's an opportunity to learn about the centuries of history that have taken place on these 11,000 acres. And most of all, it's about making memories that will last long after their athletic careers come to a close. So as the Green Bar guests enjoy bunker tours, afternoon tea, and the lobster mashed potatoes at Prime 44, the Green Bar Valley Channel is proud to take you courtside in Colonial Hall. Every dribble, pass, shot, steal, and buzzer beater can be found right here as these talented athletes give their all for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's game time at the 2023 Battle for the Spring House. Mountains and the trees make our area some of the most scenic in the nation, but they also present a challenge to Appalachian Power supplying energy. More than half of our customers' power outages are caused by trees falling onto our power lines. That's why we dedicate more than 1,600 full-time workers to manage vegetation. Each year, we clear more than 5,000 miles along our rights of way to keep service safe and reliable. Every day, I work to keep trees away from our power lines. It's an important part of Appalachian Power's commitment to keep your energy service reliable. Sports in the Greenbrier fit together like peaches and iced tea. Over the years, America's Resort has hosted some incredible sporting events, including the Ryder Cup, Solheim Cup, the PGA Tour, professional boxing, and training camps for NFL and NBA teams. From Sam Sneed to Tom Brady and from Lou Gehrig to Tiger Woods, sports' biggest stars have walked the iconic hallways of the Greenbrier or the fairways of the Old White. Last February, a new tradition began with the inaugural Battle for the Spring House, bringing basketball inside the Grand Colonial Hall for the first time for a setting that is truly unmatched. Now it's time for an encore as some of the top high school teams in the Mountain State return to this hallowed venue for year number two. The field this year features the best of the best, with four girls' powers and four boys' powers from every corner of the state going to battle with the ultimate goal of bringing the Spring House Trophy back to their schools. The competition will be fierce, but this weekend is about more than basketball. It's a chance for these student athletes to experience one of West Virginia's true treasures. It's an opportunity to learn about the centuries of history that have taken place on these 11,000 acres. And most of all, it's about making memories that will last long after their athletic careers come to a close. So as the Green Bar guests enjoy bunker tours, afternoon tea, and the lobster mashed potatoes at Prime 44, the Green Bar Valley Channel is proud to take you courtside in Colonial Hall. Every dribble, pass, shot, steal, and buzzer beater can be found right here as these talented athletes give their all for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's game time at the 2023 Battle for the Spring House. Camera marker. Game changer. Can you raise your hand if someone in your life, whether a family member or friend, has been impacted? We have uh, had a few overdoses um, at our high school, and we had a couple last year at the middle school level, too. One of my best friends last year, she overdosed on fentanyl. At my school, we had three kids overdose in a day because they all took hits off of the same dab pen that was laced. Welcome in to America's Resort, the Greenbrier. It's game three of today's battle for the spring house schedule. We started off this morning with Wyoming East picking up a big win over Nitro. We followed that with a Shady Spring come from behind win over Cabell Midland in game two. And now it's time for game three of the evening, a much anticipated game around the state and here in Greenbrier County as number five Greenbrier East takes on number two Parkersburg South. And Earlier this morning around 11 o'clock, we got the word that this game was completely sold out and people have been trying to find a way 
to get in here to Colonial Hall tonight to see this matchup. It's going to be a fantastic one. And I'm Cam Huffman along with Eric Workman. And, Eric, you can uh, already feel the buzz starting in here as we're about five minutes before game time. Uh, this one's going to be special. Yeah, it sure is. You can definitely feel the buzz just from the facility itself alone. And then, of course, you bring in two of the state's powerhouse teams for the year. That's going to be an exciting matchup. Yeah, it's been a, a great day already. As I mentioned, some close games, but this was the one people are looking forward to. And then tonight's uh, nightcap in the girls' bracket, which features uh, Mingo Central and Greenbar East. So the hometown fans here in Greenbar County are here to see their Spartans, and they're both going to see a good matchup. And uh, this Parkersburg South team, Eric, ranked number two in the state, as we mentioned, only lost a couple of games, uh, three games, I believe, two of them to out-of-state teams and the other one to number one, Morgantown. So they've uh, they've been really tested and, and played really great so far this season. Yeah, they have. And I, of course, talked to Greenbar East's Coach Patton. He talks about the schedule that they played. Well, Parkersburg South played in a similar schedule, so it, it is a legit matchup between two great teams tonight, and they're both going to bring it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And Green Bay East on the other side, as you mentioned, they went through a little stretch there. They started out fa- fast to begin the season, went through a little stretch. They dropped a few games, but they, they have come back and knocked off South Charleston and Woodrow Wilson their last time out, so they're playing good basketball right now, and they, they come to this game confident that they can uh, – Send a message around the state here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I've talked to a few of the Green Bay East players. And they, they're ready. They're locked in. Um, senior-dominated team, and those seniors got the younger guys ready to go. Absolutely. It's been, been a fun day already here. We started out this morning with a, uh, a breakfast and a message from one of the sponsors here at Battle for the Springhouse Game Changer who brought in Meg Bulger, uh, the former WVU All-American and WVU Hall of Famer to talk about the, the dangers of the opioids here in fentanyl around the state. And the uh, they showed a video called One Pill Can Kill. If you get a chance to see, to see it sometime, it's a very powerful video. And hopefully those kids got the message this morning. I could tell they were all focused in on it, but it was a, a great way to start the day. And then they've come out, done some shoot-arounds, and then they're here, here ready to play. So they've done some activities around the resort as well, so it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a, a big message by the state with Game Changer coming in. And like you said, Meg Bulger here, that's a huge name in the state of West Virginia, especially if you followed West Virginia women's hoops. So um, great job by them. And, of course, like you said, there's a lot of young children in that uh, ballroom this morning locked in and learned a lot this morning. Yeah, absolutely. She she did great providing that message, and the video was was fantastic. So uh, a role model in the Bulger family in general, everybody, even if they don't know Meg, they certainly know big brother Mark and uh, the the Bulger family. So hopefully that message resonated to them. But we're uh, excited to – to bring you the action here tonight, and we're it looks like we're about ready for introductions of the starting lineups to the national anthem. The first two games, Eric, if uh, game three lives up to it with the national anthem from the Greenbar Springhouse Entertainers, it should be good because they've done a fantastic job so far. Yeah, they have. That <laughs> blow you away, gives you chills running up and down your arms. Absolutely. What do you think is, as we pr- prepare here for the starting lineups? What do you think the key is for this one? Obviously, two good teams. What, what, what separates them? I, I think 100% it's going to be a defensive battle. Both teams are quick and fast and try to go downhill. So it'll, uh, if you decide to play defense tonight, you're going to be successful. Absolutely. That's, uh, at Green Bay East, I know they said after the win over Beckley, their offense comes from their defense. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Colonial Hall at the historic Greenbrier Resort for our second annual Battle for the Spring House. Our third game of the day is an exciting boys' class 4A game featuring the number two rated Parkersburg South Patriots and the number five Greenbrier East Spartans. At this time, let's meet the starting lineups for tonight's game, beginning with the Parkersburg South Patriots under the direction of head coach Mike Fallon. Please welcome 6'3", junior number five, Jackson Smith. Six three senior number zero Austin Reeves. Six two senior number one Cyrus Traw. Six eight senior number twenty three Nathan Plotner. And six three senior number twenty four Aiden Blake. And the rest of the Parkersburg South Patriots. Now let's meet the starting lineup for the Green Briar East Spartans under the direction of head coach Jared Patton. Please welcome 5'11 senior number 21, Chris Sinclair. 6'1 senior number 22, Caden Huffman. 6'2 
six foot senior number 30, Bryson Brammer. Six foot senior number five, John Goose Scabbard. And six foot senior number three, Adam Seams. And the rest of the Greenbrier East Spartans. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps as we will honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Singing our national anthem this evening, we welcome Andre from the Greenbrier Sp uh, Springhouse Entertainers. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so The twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Just as promised, another fantastic rendition of the Star Spangled Banner performed by Andre of the Greenbrier Entertainers. And now we're about ready for tip-off. The officials for tonight's game will be Greg Furnett, Jeff Harding, and Timmy Justice. And they're going to have their hands full tonight because these teams, there's a lot of athletes on the floor. They're going to have to be ready to go and on their game. Oh, yeah, I hope they brought the track shoes. It's just going to be a fast <laughs> pickup basketball game. No doubt about it. And we're ready to go. Inside Colonial Hall at America's Resort, the Greenbrier. Beautiful facility. Great job by the staff here. Wonderful. Yeah, it was a it was a good tournament last year. Great tournament last year, and uh, even better this year. The, the field's even better, and uh, made you know always when you you're, have your first year or something, you you see little things here and there you can tweak and make it better, and they Greenbrier has done that for sure. We're ready to tip it off. It's going to be Adam Seams in the center circle tipping it off against Nathan Plotner for Parkersburg South, and Greenbrier East controls the tip. Seams gets it to Gabbert. Gabbert looking for some space in the lane. Back up top to Seams as he resets. Seams gives the Gabbert. Gabbert just behind the foul line, no good, and Parkersburg South all over the board. Here come the Patriots back the other way. Into the lane, Austin Reeves was blocked, and a late whistle comes from Timmy Justice. He calls a foul. Did you see who that was against? Yeah, it was against Chris Sinclair. He didn't like it very much, but I, from our spot here, I think he got him with the body. And maybe what he didn't like was how late it came. The whistle yeah. was late as Austin Reeves goes to the line and can't connect on the first. I think, Eric, just the opening minutes and just knowing the kind of basketball these teams play, I think the battle of the board is going to be important one tonight as well. Yeah, it will definitely. As Reeves swishes through his second one for the first points of the game, it's one to nothing, Parkersburg South. Patriots set up in some pressure. Green Brace goes right through it. Here comes Caden Huffman to the basket. Nice give there to Jacobs. Or to Sinclair, excuse me. He puts it up and scores. Green Brace with its first lead. It's two to one. 
I'll tell you, the Green Marys faithful showed up tonight. Packed house. You can really feel the energy. From the corner, that was Jackson Smith couldn't connect. And here comes Green Marys in transition. Bramer backs it back out. Didn't have the numbers he wanted. Seems going to pull up for the jumper short off the rim. And it's been one shot every time down so far for Green Marys. Here comes Parkersburg South. Reeves gives it off to Blake. His shot no good, but the offensive board put up no good that time by Plattner. I said the boards were going to be big, and they have been so far. Greenberry's trying to run again. Goose finds himself open for a three, strong off the back iron. Big rebound that time by Greenberry. And Goose goes to the rim, has it swatted away by Plotner. Plotner, the 6'8 senior, long arms, has definitely has a size advantage inside here tonight. Yeah, he's got a lot of length to his body, and he definitely knows how to use it. Greenberry is going to inbound underneath the basket. Goose has it, gets it to Caden. Down in the corner, Brammer looking for some offense. Brace swinging around the key, trying to find a good look and break down that Parkersburg South defense. That's one thing they definitely do well is defend. Yeah, we talked about their length coming into the game, and, of course, they're using it. They're showing it now, using it well. Seems with a pull-up, strong off the back iron, Parkersburg South grabs the rebound. Here they come, trying to run in transition. Underneath, passes to Plotner. Plotner goes up. Can't get it to fall, but he's fouled and will go to the line. That foul is going to go against Bryson Brammer, his first. Second team foul against Greenberry. And Plotner definitely is going to be a matchup nightmare tonight for Greenberry East. Short on the first one. Yeah, he's, he's got a good six inches on anybody out there right now, doesn't he? He does, and it's, it's not just his height either. As you said, his, his wingspan, his long arms, as he puts this one up and ties the game at two. 6.03 to go here in the opening quarter. Parkersburg South likes to play that man press and, um, and trap out of it just like this right here. Green Brace does a nice job getting through it as Goose throws over top. Here goes Seams to the basket, can't finish. Takes out some cheerleaders on his way underneath the basket. And Parkersburg South has numbers right now if they can find them. Cyrus, Cyrus Trawl to the rim, scores it. Cyrus Trawl, the Moss Award winner in the state of West Virginia, is the West Virginia's top wide receiver this year. But he definitely showed the hops he uses when he's a wide receiver right there. Huffman spins in the lane, had it stripped away from him. Parkersburg South trying to run. They lead it 4-2. to two. Reeves gets it inside. And that time Plotner stepped on the line. It'll turn over to Greenberry East. So that's one thing Greenberry East can do is force him underneath the basket and make it a little bit tougher for him. It's obvious Parkersburg South is looking for Plotner. They know what's the, the uh, mismatch they have there. Yeah, for sure. Greenberry East has handled the pressure well, though, on the run. Caden Huffman off the glass, can't get it to fall. Gets his own rebound, puts it up, and has it blocked. We're going to get a foul. It's going to be on Plotner, Cam. His first and the first team foul against Parkersburg South, and Caden Huffman going to go to the line. If you're Greenberry, nothing, or if you're either team, really, nothing easy is going to come on offense, so you've got to take advantage of free throws as easy opportunities to get points as Huffman sinks his first one. Yeah, and Greenberry's been a decent shooting uh, free throw team all year, so hopefully they can capitalize from that. And, um, Coach Fallon didn't like that foul at all. He was very animated with the official a second ago. Huffman puts it up, ties the game at four apiece. Here comes Parkersburg South as Trawl has it down. He's guarded by Seams, trying to go to the rim. Nice defense there by Seams, but the turnaround in the lane up and good by Trawl. Six to four now, Parkersburg South leads it. Back on the other end, Bramer left open for a jumper. Can't get it to fall. Nice job on the rebound there by Sinclair, who goes high in the air for it, but he slides as he hits the ground, and he's going to be called for a travel. Home fans here don't like that one. What a fun atmosphere this is, Eric. Oh, it's phenomenal, isn't it? Absolutely. Monquel Davis into the game now for the first time. As well as Gabe Patton. Reeves with it for Parkersburg South. He gets it out on the wing to Smith. Smith fires the three, no good. Rebound, Goose Gabbert. Goose tries to dribble through some pressure, gets it to Monquell. Monquell does a nice job getting to the middle of the court. Here comes Seams on the break, lays it up, can't get it to fall. That's twice 
He's had an open look going to the rim and can't get it to go. Here comes Reeves now back on the other end. A little Euro step in the lane, puts it up and scores. It's eight to four now. It's back on the other end. Patton has his shot blocked, but they're going to call the foul on Plotner, and that's his second. That could be a big foul. That's a big foul for, for Parkersburg South. We're going to sub him out right here. Yeah, quickly to the scorer's table is number 14, Plotner Seth Meadows. Gabe Patton going to have a pair. Eight to four, Parkersburg South leads it. Patton is going to have two to cut, try to cut that advantage down to two. His first is good. And the game for the Patriots, number 12, Cole Joy, number 14, Seth Meadows. Both teams subbing here early on. Jude Libby ch- set to check in the game for Green Bar East. Second free throw from Patton is good. Makes it eight to six now with 4.06 to go here in the opening quarter. We appreciate everyone watching us live here on the Green Bar Valley Channel. However you're watching, Facebook, Roku, or YouTube, leave us a comment. Let us know how you're enjoying this game. And if you get a chance, come out and join us at the Brattle for the Spring House. Davis with the steal going to the rim, lays it up. No good. Green Bar East, Eric, has had a lot of shots right at the basket. Can't get him to fall early on. They sure have, and that was, that was contested there, but we've got to, make, got to finish those layups. That's three missed layups by Greenbury East. Troll strong off the back iron. Adam Seams trying to push the tempo. Seams, nice feed there to Goose. Goose has it stripped away on his way to the rim. This Parkersburg South team, as we said, plays some defense as Troll comes back on the other end. Nice feed inside there to Smith, and he finishes. Makes it 10-6 to six now, 3.21 to go. Gabbert sees some pressure, gets it to Seams. Now middle of the floor to Davis. Patton's going to let go on a three, misses everything. Rebound, Aiden Blake. Hey, Green Bay is pressing right here. They, they need to just get, relax and find out what's good for them. Blake maybe took some steps on his way to the basket there, but no call. Lays it up and scores. It's 12-6. to six. Green Bay is trying to come back quickly on the other end. Libby puts up the jumper, can't get it to fall, rolls out. It was in and out that time, and here comes Parkersburg South pushing the tempo. They love to push it. Trawl open for a three, strong off the back iron, no good. Goose Gabbert strong up and get the rebound. Here comes Seams once again, great pass to Patton. Patton finishes this time at the rim, makes it 12-8. What a pass by Adam Seams. Cole Joy into the game now for Parkersburg South. He gives it to Smith, who's going to fire a three. Hits the side of the backboard, and Seams is on the run. Seams with numbers, goes to the basket, left hand, no good again. Adam Seams has missed three of those right at the rim. You don't see that very often. As Joy back the other way for Parkersburg South, gets it to Smith again. Smith feeds it inside to Meadows. Meadows turns around on Jude Libby, and he's going to be called, no, a push. I thought he was going to call a travel. Yeah. We're going to get a push called underneath there against Libby. And he'll take a seat. Caden Huffman back in and Brammer back in as well. He's going to replace Goose Gabbert. Adam seems Eric is getting to the rim. It's just not going in right now early on. Yeah, that's all right. We know Adam. He's going to pop back into this and uh, take over the game at some point. He's too good of a player. Joy's going to inbound underneath the basket for Parkersburg South. Gets it over in the corner. Harry Silvis into the game. Hits that three. That's a big one. Makes it 15 to 8. Spartans through the pressure. Davis in the lane, has it stripped on his way. The basket will be out of bounds. He'll stay with Green Bay East. Seems now going to inbound underneath the basket. The media behind him up on the stage. We have a large contingent of media members covering this one today. As Huffman spins in the lane, puts it up with the left hand, has it partially blocked. Parkersburg South is going to push the tempo as they have been all game. Reeves now, top of the key. Hands off going to the basket is Cole Joy. His shot no good. Here comes Patton with it. Now Seams. Seams to the bucket once again. This time he finishes and one. <laughs> we just talked about it. What did I just say, right? And, Eric, as you watch how this game's playing out, you know, Parkersburg South playing really, really well. But Seams, although he hadn't finished, looks like he can get to the rim almost any time he wants to right now. Yeah, the previous game, we, uh, Shady Springs coach, Coach Olson, was saying, guys, some teams struggle guarding you, go downhill, okay? And Adams found success in that, so hopefully they keep going off of that. 
Shot up and good for Seams. Makes it 15 to 11. The Parkersburg South lead is four with 131 to go here in the opening quarter. Silvis had it on the wing. Now back up top, shot up for three from Trawl. No good. That's a rebound from Cole Joy. He puts it back up and scores. Great rebound by Joy right there. Yeah, the offensive boards, Parkersburg South has had some success here in the opening quarter there. Bramber open for a three. No good off the back iron. And here comes Parkersburg South. Every time they get it, they want to push the tempo. Inside, turnaround from Trawl off the glass, scores it. 19 to 11 now. Three brace back the other way. The Brammer in transition, layup good. 19 13. We're under a minute to go in the opening quarter. It's been a fast and furious one as expected. And again, Harry Silvis left open for three, nails it. 22 13. The Parkersburg South lead is nine. Davis trying to change that as he goes to the rim. No call. He wanted some contact. Didn't get it. Here comes Cole Joy. The Silvis again. He's been hot. Heat check there. No good. Adam Seams with the rebound. 16 seconds to go. Seams pushing the tempo again. Nice pass again to Huffman. Huffman finishes at the rim this time. 22-15. Clock down to seven. Trawl going to step back, drive in the lane, puts it up. They're going to get a foul before the shot. Foul goes against Gabe Patton. And it is going to be called on the floor. So that's actually a break for Green Bar East there. Yeah, it definitely was. 22-15, just 3.5 seconds to play here in the opening quarter. Man, what a fast basketball game, right? It Up and down, been. track meet. Austin Reeves set the inbound. He gets it into Troll. Troll will drive baseline. Oh. Nice move there. Puts it up and scores. And that will be the end of the first quarter. We've played one. Their score, Parkersburg South 24, Greenbrier East 15. You're watching the Battle for the Spring House on the Greenbrier Valley Channel. Okay, be camera marker. Game changer. Can you raise your hand if someone in your life, whether a family member or friend, has been impacted? We have uh, had a few overdoses. Um, at our high school, and we had a couple last year at the middle school level, too. One of my best friends last year, she overdosed on fentanyl. At my school, we had three kids overdose in a day because they all took hits off of the same dab pen that was laced. Dude, they shot lights out. Parkersburg South shot it well there in the opening quarter. Yeah, I got them uh, 10 of 13 in the opening quarter. That's uh, a lot of layups, though, but they've hit a few, th couple threes, and uh, both teams like to play really fast. So hopefully, uh, Greenbury East can uh, make some defensive stops. And then yep. Parkersburg South, of course, we've talked about their length. They use it very well. Yeah, as you said, a lot of layups, but they have shot the three ball well as well. Greenbury East, as we mentioned a couple times, had some good looks right at the rim that they couldn't get the fall there in the opening quarter, and that's the difference right now as Parkersburg South leads it by nine. Reeves with it now, top of the key. Hands off to Smith. Smith gets in the lane. He's going to be called for steps. I believe he slid his foot right there. It's uh, hard to see from our angle, but. Parkersburg South sticking with this press. Uh, Green Bar East has handled it really well. I'm almost surprised to say, see him stay in it because that's really where some of the Green Bar East offense has come from. Brammer fakes the three, then tries to get it inside to Huffman, stole it away. Trawl coming back, shows his speed, blocked by Seams. Big block What a right block. There. Gabbert now pull up three, misses. Huffman with the rebound. Good rebound that time. And Brammer with a long one, too short. He was a good four steps behind the line. Here comes Parkersburg South on the run. Aiden Blake to the rim, can't get it to fall, and we're going to get a foul called underneath there. It's going to be on seams, I believe. Tell you what, we'll go back here in a second and watch that, that replay there. Yeah, that was, a, that was something. 
Adam Seams with a big block. It, it really could have been special if uh, they could have finished it off with a three ball on the other end as Troll hits the nice jumper on the inbounds pass. And the lead has grown to 11. Now it's 26-15. Double-digit lead. Greenberry East hanging with them, but they just haven't made some of the open looks. As Patton goes to the rim, has his shot partially blocked. Here comes South again. Nice play there defensively by Brammer. Micah Jones gets it back, but he's going to be called for a walk. End of the game for the Spartans, number four, Montel Davis. Davis checks back in. Patton going to take a seat. 6.43 to go here in the second quarter. Parkersburg South leads at 26-15. Gabbert with trough on his trough on his hip there, loses it. Here comes Parkersburg South the other way. Shot blocked again. Micah Jones blocked by Seams. Seams on the run. Greenberg East has numbers this time. And Seams to the hoop. They're going to call the foul on the floor. Greg Fournette pointing at the floor, making it clear. Austin Reeves picks up his second. Tell you what, Greenberg East's best offense right now is running the floor fast. Absolutely. They're beating Parkersburg South up and down the floor. Gabbert for three, short. Yeah, right now, the biggest difference is Parkersburg South is making its open looks. Greenberg East isn't as Brammer misses on a little runner there. Here come the Patriots back the other way. Reeves gets in the lane, puts up a little floater, is short. Green Brace numbers here again, three on two as Gabbert gets in the lane, puts it up. Good and the foul. Parkersburg South thought it had to charge. The referee, Jeff Harding, says otherwise. And Green Brace going to try to complete an and one here. Micah Jones gets the foul. And Goose will go back to the line for one. That's a big bucket there. Is this the uh, Parkersburg South lead had grown to double digit digits? Greenberry East needed something. And as you said, Eric, it's it's all coming in transition really for Greenberry East right now. It definitely is. And Greenberry East is really fast. And of course we'd like to shoot three ball, but we can do that in transition as well. And we have not shot the three ball well early on for Greenberry East. No, for surely not. But I'll tell you what's killing them right now is the one shot now. Parkersburg South just flexing their size and length on us. Gabbert takes a deep breath as he goes to the line. Goose has had a fantastic season as he puts this one up and scores. It's now 26-18. Big three-point play there. Pulls Greenberry East back to single digits. Aiden Blake into the lane for Targetsburg South. Bramer tries to draw the charge. No call there. And Targetsburg South scores it. I don't know if that should have been a block or a charge, Eric, but I don't I don't think you could not call that either yeah, way. There's a call either way. If you don't know, get your buddies to help you. Brammer from the corner can't connect on an open three. Greenberry East has had some open looks from three-point range, just can't score it right now. But Gabbert with a reverse layup. What a play. 28-20. Smith now gets it to Blake on the wing. His shot no good. Greenberry East. Holds Spartansburg South to one and out this time and see if Spartans can push the tempo again. Gabbert on the wing. This time the three ball is good. Deuce Gabbert for three. He's heating up, and Greenberry East has fallen back in, and it's 28-23. Spartansburg South on the other end. Aiden Blake shot no good. Ball's loose on the floor. Gabbert has it. He was kicked in the face. There's arms and legs flying everywhere underneath there. There's going to be a foul. Goose Gabbert got hit right in the mouth. Yes, he did. Yeah, I knew it was coming there. Aiden Blake gets Blake the, the foul call. And it's Greenberry East basketball down just five now, Eric, because they're making a little run. It was 26-15 Parkersburg South. Greenberry East has outscored them 8-2 to two since then. Parkersburg South's quarterback on the floor came out of the game for a little bit, Trawl, and they definitely uh, showed there. Greenberry East has really handled that pressure well. They have they've done a really good job with that tonight, and uh, uh, if we can just get a few rebounds here, I think it helps Green Reese a ton. Gabbert now just inside the three-point line this time. No good. Green Reese trying to get back in transition. Troll out. Going to absolutely push it. Lays it off the glass. No good. Rebound. Green East. Davis has it. He's trapped looking for some All help. All out. And Coach Jared Patton wants Green a timeout. 4.23 to go here in the second quarter. Green East trails Parkersburg South 28-23. 
30 seconds on that. And here's a look back at that block from Adam Seams that we talked about earlier. Watch Seams get into the air and just swat it off the glass. Nice <laughs> play there. What a play. You can see it in, in between Seams and Trawl. What athleticism you were oh seeing on the goodness, floor tonight. Yes. I'll tell you what, you got the state, basically the state player of the year in soccer with Seams, and you got the state wide receiver of the year with Trawl. I mean, it's a, a, two different sports, but amazing fall seasons for both of them. Yeah, that tells you what kind of athletes we have on the floor, and we saw that athleticism there from Adam Seams. And as I was mentioning just a little while ago, Eric, 26 to 15, Parkersburg South had the double digit lead, and since then, East has outscored. Parkersburg South 8-2 to two to claw back in it. The lead is now down to five, and it's going to be Spartan basketball. Yeah, you, you knew coming into this, this is going to be a game of runs by both teams, so whichever one can withstand it the longest is going, going to get this uh, W. Here comes Greenberg. He's trying to push the tempo up the floor. Inside Sinclair off the glass, no good. If Easton had made layups right now, this would be a completely different game. Oh, absolutely. Here comes Cole Joy. Gets it on the wing to Aiden Blake. Now Joy driving in, had it stripped away from him, but we're going to get a foul first, and it's going to go against Bramer. That's his second. Foul on the Spartans number 30, Bryson Bramer, his second. So he's going to check out, and Caden Huffman will check in. I'll tell you, we'll go back and look at film with that play right there. If he moves his feet a little bit quicker over into the driving lane, it's not a foul. He's already at the spot. Trawl is inside the foul line, pull up jumper, good. He's a special player. Not only on the football field, but right here on the basketball court. He's one of those uh, exceptional athletes, isn't he? Huffman to the rim. Oh, they're going to call that a charge. Jared Patton does not agree. That's the seventh team foul here, so the rest of the way, Parkersburg South will be shooting. Here comes Blake driving through, has it stripped away by Goose. Green Berets pushing it forward. Adam Seams has numbers. Seams going to go to the rim himself and score it. 30 to 25. What a basketball game we're witnessing. Absolutely. This has been a lot of fun. I know the nightcap is going to be more of the same. Absolutely. Great, great basketball teams coming together at the Greenbrier American Resort to play this. Cole Joy driving, spinning in the lane. Nice move there. Off the glass, no good, though. Caden Huffman clears the rebound and gets it to Seams. Seams has put on a show here early for Greenberg East. Monquell Davis in the lane, puts it up. Bucket and a foul. <laughs> Monquell wanted to get in on this highlight show, and he goes to the rim. We've talked a lot about the athleticism on the floor. Don't forget the Greenberg East quarterback out there. Right. Monquell Davis goes to the rim and scores it. My goodness. Monquell will have one more to try to finish off this three-point play and cut the Parkersburg South lead down to two. 2.56 on the clock. Davis's shot is good. 30 to 28. Greenberg East right back in this one now. Just a minute ago we were talking about they needed a bucket to keep it from getting them away from them. And they've done just that as they've called back to within one score. Parkersburg South with it. Troll, he's been the star there. Pull up jumper from the foul line, no good. Rebound tipped around and Parkersburg South comes up with it. Baseline jumper. Up, no good. Now Sinclair gets the rebound, and Greenberg East has a chance now to tie or take the lead. Goose across midcourt, dribbling with the left hand. Back out to Monquell, and he'll set up the offense as Jared Patton calls out the play. 2.22 to go. It's a two-point game. Adam backs it out. Now Adam going to drive the lane off the glass. No good this time. Parkersburg South clears the rebound. Here comes Mason Reams with it, trying to push the tempo. He gets it out to Harry Silvers, who made a couple, couple big threes early. And now Troll driving in the lane, puts it off the glass, no good. Rebound, though. They're going to get a foul call. Goose Gabbert thought he had the block on Seth Meadows, but instead they're going to call the foul against Goose. 
I'll tell you, the Spartan faithful did not appreciate that call there at all. And Parkersburg South, Eric, is uh, deep on this bench. As they've played a lot of players here early on. They have, and I, I haven't caught up in my book with who all they play, but they are deep. Seth Meadows to the line for him now. He puts the first one up, no good. Meadows will have one more. This one short off the iron. Seams has it. So Greenberg East again has a chance to take the lead or tie it. Pass inside to Huffman. Huffman shot blocked. Nice athletic play there by Troll. Greenberg East gets it back and Goose scores to tie the game. Goose Gabbert ties the game at 30. 140 to go here in the opening half. This one has absolutely lived up to the hype as Seams gets the steal. Seams pushing the tempo. Gets it to Sinclair. What Sinclair a pass. Scores it. 32 to 30. Greenbrier East now back in front with 124 to go in the opening half. Three ball from the wing. Swishes it. Harry Silvis. He has fit a few of them here today. I think three threes in there. right there. three for three on three-pointers tonight. Unofficial stat. Puts Parkersburg South back in front. East now across the timeline. One minute to go here in the opening half. It's a one-point game. This one has truly lived up to the hype so far. Davis now gets it to Seams. Seams to Gabbert. Greenberg East in no huge hurry here. 45 seconds. One-point game. Gabbert goes between the legs and backs it out. Greenberg East, it looks like, is going to try to hold for the last shot here. That was a foul. Maybe not as Gabbert gets it in the lane, puts it up, no good. Rebound, poked away. Last touch by Monquel Davis. It'll be Parkersburg South ball with 25.9 seconds. Patriots lead it 33-32 in what has been a fantastic game so far. You said it right, it has lived up to a tie to this point. It has. You know, a lot of times you, you come into a game like this, you look forward to it all day long, fans do, and then two or three minutes into it, all the momentum's going. And it had the potential for that to happen as Parkersburg South built up that double-digit lead, but Greenberg East came storming right. back. Which we know by watching Greenberg East a couple times this year, it's happened. Early in the year with Huntington, they were down by almost 20, I believe, came back and called back in and won that thing. And then tonight's been impressive as well. Traw with it. He's been impressive. Speaking of impressive, we're inside 10 seconds now, down yeah, to six. They want him to shoot it, that's for sure. Traw's going to drive against Sinclair, puts it up, the shot blocked. Oh, threw it back to him. And it's no good at the buzzer. That's going to do it at the half. Parkersburg South, 33, Greenberg East, 32. What a fantastic game we've had so far. And we'll be back for more in just a moment on the Greenbrier Valley Channel. You look at somebody that's addicted to drugs as this person that's falling down and can't function and she wasn't like that. And she wasn't like that even at the end. trees make our area some of the most scenic in the nation, but they also present a challenge to Appalachian Power supplying energy. More than half of our customers' power outages are caused by trees falling onto our power lines. That's why we dedicate more than 1,600 full-time workers to manage vegetation. Each year, we clear more than 5,000 miles along our rights of way to keep service safe and reliable. Every day, I work to keep trees away from our power lines. It's an important part of Appalachian Power's commitment to keep your energy service reliable. Sports in the Greenbrier fit together like peaches and iced tea. Over the years, America's Resort has hosted some incredible sporting events, including the Ryder Cup, Solheim Cup, the PGA Tour, professional boxing, and training camps for NFL and NBA teams. From Sam Snead to Tom Brady and from Lou Gehrig to Tiger Woods, sports' biggest stars have walked the iconic hallways of the Greenbrier 
were the fairways of the Old White. Last February, a new tradition began with the inaugural Battle for the Spring House, bringing basketball inside the Grand Colonial Hall for the first time for a setting that is truly unmatched. Now it's time for an encore as some of the top high school teams in the Mountain State return to this hallowed venue for year number two. The field this year features the best of the best, with four girls powers and four boys powers from every corner of the state going to battle with the ultimate goal of bringing the Springhouse Trophy back to their schools. The competition will be fierce, but this weekend is about more than basketball. It's a chance for these student athletes to experience one of West Virginia's true treasures. It's an opportunity to learn about the centuries of history that have taken place on these 11,000 acres. And most of all, it's about making memories that will last long after their athletic careers come to a close. So as the Green Bar guests enjoy bunker tours, afternoon tea, and the lobster mashed potatoes at Prime 44, the Green Bar Valley Channel is proud to take you courtside in Colonial Hall. Every dribble, pass, shot, steal, and buzzer beater can be found right here as these talented athletes give their all for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's game time at the 2023 Battle for the Springhouse. is a you know, trillion dollar business. Do you guys understand what the term one pill can kill means? We actually see people who don't make it pretty often. I wouldn't have imagined in middle school that it would be like this big of a deal in high school. The fatal dose is considered two milligrams. If you had 10 tablets in your hand, four of them have that amount. It doesn't care who you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how pretty you are, how ugly you are. It don't discriminate. It's not an overdose, it's poisoning young kids, they can't take the type of dosage that even an adult can. That's how we're ending an overdose. Real questions from West Virginia teens. Answers from the people on the front lines. This is One Pill Can Kill. Half time here at the Battle for the Spring House. Game three of the afternoon, Greenbury East and Parkersburg South. Cam Huffman along with Eric Workman. And Eric, we saw a fantastic first half that, as we said, really lived up to the hype. Greenbury East uh, scored first, had a 2 1 lead. And then Parkersburg South went on a little, little run, made it 8 to 4. It was back and forth. And then Parkersburg South started building that lead, had a 24 to 15 advantage at the end of the first quarter, extended it to double digits for the first time at 26 15. But then Greenbury East went on a run, run of its own, and the Spartans finally tie it at 30 apiece and then take the lead at 32 to 30 with just 124 to go in the opening half. Parkersburg South scores last on a three ball to make it 33-32 at halftime, but it was a fantastic first half that uh, was entertaining to say the least. Oh, my goodness. Athletes everywhere, great basketball everywhere, and – the Green Berets, I guarantee Coach Patton's selling them in the locker room. Guys, we've got to get get some boards, okay? And then on Parkersburg South side, I guarantee they're saying we got to keep them out of the lane because Green Berets is getting to the, to the lane every time. And then, unfortunately for Parkersburg South, Green Berets has missed the, the bunnies, the easy ones. But on the other end, we, they got to stop them in transition. So. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, Parkersburg South scorching there in that first quarter. Did they cool off a little bit numbers-wise in the second quarter? Yeah, they did. They um, In the second quarter, they went – four for nine so they slowed down a little bit and then of course uh, the hot shooting 10 for 13 starting in the first quarter so a uh, better job of Greenberry suggesting and making some uh, defensive plays and keeping them down from there points wise let's look at uh, I guess Parkersburg South first um, I know Cyrus Trawl has been tough there in the opening half but what else has, has been yeah, going so on he had a big first quarter he had eight in the first quarter and then only two in the second quarter which he came out for a couple minutes in the second quarter so you could tell they dropped off right there but he's got 10 to lead them and then you got Austin Reeves with five, Jackson Smith with five, um, Nathan Plotner with one. He made he's one for two at the foul line. Then Aiden Blake has four, Cole Joy two, and then Silvis. We talked about him. He's 100 percent behind the arc. He's three for three on the night. Let's look at the other side now for Green Bay East in the opening half. Uh, Goose Gabbert got hot there a couple times, and Adam Seams really got to the rim as you said almost anytime he wanted to yeah adam seems got to the rim a lot unfortunately he missed the, those layups there close to the basket but he uh ended with five at halftime but he probably had that many dishes too so it's just to, to uh, compliment his scoring but um he had a few uh, amazing passes of course like he normally does goose gabbert leads east with 10 um caden huffman has three 
uh, Chris Sinclair four, Bryson Brammer two, uh, Monquel Davis three, a huge and one in the second quarter. Um, Gabe Patton with four. All right, so that rounds out the scoring for both teams. As we said, an entertaining opening half. We'll take one more break here, and when we come back, it'll be time for the second half of action. Greenbrier East in Parkersburg South. Game three of the battle for the spring house on the Greenbrier Valley Channel. with you I didn't care I was making my money and uh, I know that's a terrible terrible thing for any human being to feel do you think fentanyl has just completely changed the game it's the, the worst thing I've ever seen in my life look at a couple big plays from the opening half that one a fantastic dish on the drive. Tell you, Sinclair. Look at how many times that ball spun around the rim before no it finally fell through. I'll tell you what, Adam Seenfoy has the best vision of a basketball player I've seen all year. It's almost sometimes it surprises some of his teammates that aren't quite ready for <laughs> some of the passes that he makes. Yeah, it's amazing, really. Here's another replay here from the opening half. Caden Huffman on the break. Goes up strong. That's the one they called him for the, the charge on. And the offensive foul. That's a, I don't know, seeing it is there in slow motion. I'm not sure about that one there. I think he was sliding under him. But either way, the charge is a momentum swinger. It's, it's a big play for, by whoever takes it. And the teams that do that right there usually go on runs. So. <laughs> Absolutely, yep. One of those plays that, that can change a game for sure is the offensive foul. Both teams back out on the floor warming up. As we, our sponsor show here in the Green Bar Valley Channel, uh, thanks to them for making all of this possible. Is uh, It takes a lot to put on an event like this one, and uh, all of these sponsors that you see on your screen have made it possible. So make be sure to tell them thanks for bringing this all to you this weekend at the Green Bar. Green Bar is back in its huddle going over some last-minute instructions as we get ready for the second half of play. If it uh, is anything like the first half, Eric, it's going to be an enjoyable one. Both teams back in their huddles. Mike Fallon going over some instructions with the Patriots. Jerry Patton talking it through with Greenbrier East. Yeah, live in look at the huddles. Great camera work by our crew here. Fallon is one of those guys Eric has had a lot of success over his career. He's a fantastic basketball coach. And Jerry Patton, kind of young in his career as a head coach, but he's done a, a fantastic job so far for Green Bay East. He sure has. He's been very successful at the helm. It's going to be Spartan basketball to start the second half. And Goose Gabbert going to inbound right in front of a whole gaggle of Gabbert to ever cross the way. That's right. The family has showed. In the backcourt to seams, and we're underway here in the second half. Interesting matchup. They put uh, change defenders on seams to give him some length against them, I believe. Goose thought he was open for, sp- for a three, but speaking of league, Plotner uses his to swat it away. And now on the other end, Blake going to the rim, and he's going to be called – a foul's going to be called on Sinclair as Blake goes up. Hayden Blake will shoot a pair. The 6'8 senior. Hits the first. 34 32. Second one good as well. Following our game here, the final game of the evening will be Greenbury's girls against Mingo Central. Should be another great one. Go. 
Transition was huge for Spartans there in the opening half, and they get it done again here on the break as Sinclair finishes at the rim to make it 34-35. I'm really surprised Parkersburg South hadn't switched that up. Greenberg East has really ate the press up. It really has, and that's really been Greenberg East's best offense. Blake gets into the lane. Oh, I guess we'll call that a Euro step, but it looked more like an extra step from Austin Reeves as he finishes. And Gabbert couldn't get through the trap that time and turns it over. 37-34, Parkersburg South, 7.07 to go here in the third quarter. I think that's the first time South has got a turnover on East right there. I think you're right. It's because we were bragging on it. I know. Jan announcer's jinx. Into the lane this time. Blake off the glass. No good. Here comes Seam. Seam's going to push the tempo. He pull up at the line, and there's that length again from Plotner, who came from behind, swatted away. Seams didn't even know he was there. Those long arms just came in and made the play. Back on the other end, Brammer tried to save it. He threw it off the legs of Sinclair. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Parkersburg South. Tell you what, Plotner is every bit 6'8", and his length is phenomenal. Yeah, it's probably more of a, like a seven-foot wingspan. I think. Yeah. There he is in the lane again. The turnaround scores it. That's the one uh, matchup that Greenberg East doesn't know quite what to do with here as Parkersburg South pulls back ahead 39-34. Gabbert with it in the lane, it seems. He pitches it back to Gabbert. Now Davis for three, hits it. There's another big three. Every time Parkersburg South goes on a run, Greenberg East seems to have an answer. Absolutely do. Here comes Troll in the lane this time, gets by the defense and had that one wide open. Finishes the layup. Green Brace gets through that press again. Here they are on the attack. Huffman underneath puts it up. Guess who? Plotner with those long arms blocks it away. This time Parkersburg South, Jackson Smith can't finish the breakaway. Seems pushing once again. Davis now, Greenberry's going to reset the offense. 5.33 to go, 41-37. Parkersburg South leads it. Battle of two top five teams here in the state of West Virginia. And it is absolutely a battle, isn't it? It is. Gabbard in the lane, draws the defense. Nice pass there from Huffman. Sinclair with a little jumper on the baseline, can't knock it down. Tell you what, Parkersburg South has four guys at the rim every time for a rebound. Green Breeze is lucky to have one. They're going to feed it in to Plotner. Parkersburg South obviously knows that's its advantage now. That was the game yeah, plan, sure. you can tell, out of the locker room. Gabbert now in the lane, gets by a defender. Gosh. There's Plot there again. Huffman in the lane. Now Greenberry's kind of getting gun shy in there. They know he's those arms are there to swat it away. Yeah, they need to get him in the air and get some fouls on him. A guy with length like that, sometimes he can change shots even without doing anything. Nice. Yeah. And it seems at the rim this time finishes it. 41-39. 4.22 to go here in the third quarter. Blake left open for a three off a screen, and he knocks it down. Hey, well, he's came out the second half firing, and he got a little fire lit him at halftime. And Jackson Smith called for a push that time. It's his second, Cam. Goose Gabber win bound over near the Parkersburg South bench. Patriots lead at 44-39, 4.07 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, Park, Parkersburg South, man, a mass sub. They left Traw out there. Everybody else is fresh. Yeah, they really do have a lot of players they can bring into this game, and they've done it over and over, making sure they have fresh guys on the floor at all times. Patton, top of the key to Seams. Now back up top to Davis as he looks over that defense. 
Davis drives Good by. Take. Nice take there by Monquel Davis. He finishes at the rim. It's 44-41. Greenberry East won't go away. Cole Joy now with it. Swings it cross court to Traw. Traw's going to drive in, find himself open, but couldn't finish, and Gabe Patton pulls down a big rebound. Here comes Greenberry East on the other end. Gabbert with it, lays it up and scores, and we're back to a one-point game once again. 44-43. 3.18 to go. Big steal by Monquel Davis. Brammer tries to get to the rim, can't get it, then catches it laying on his bottom and throws it back to Parkersburg South. Traw with the fake, now drives against Patton. Puts it up, no good, but we're going to get a foul. If Green Brace is lucky, that'll be on the floor. They're going to call that a shooting foul. So Cyrus Traw going to go to the line. That's one place we have not seen him tonight is at the free throw line. He looks good so far as his first one hits nothing but the net. Looks like Plotner's coming back into the game. Got him a quick breather, didn't they? The winner of this game will face Shady Spring, who actually fell behind against Cabell Midland, was behind at half and had to battle back, but made a heck of a run out of the locker room and secured the victory. Second one is up, rolls around and through. 46-43 now. His trawl is called for a hold on the inbound pass. Well, he better be careful. He's going to get... Yeah, Parkersburg South, as you said, Eric, they're doing what they do. They're sticking with this uh, pressure. But see what they're what they're doing is they're matching up man, but they're trapping on the first pass. And once you get it by there, they're running the floor with you. The Green Brace has done well, and that's been a big portion of its offense. Gabbard on the left wing against Troll gets into the lane. Back out to Davis. Patton. On the wing, dangerous pass there. Seems able to collect it. Can't finish at the rim. Rolled off the side of his hand there. Just had too much spin. But able to get the rebound and upset it. Or reset it, excuse me. That's a huge foul. Absolutely. Traw once again called for it in an and one opportunity for Goose Gabbert. Adam Seams coming over and asking assistant coach Jamel Samuels what he was doing wrong on that. And you could see it, Eric. When he went up, his hand almost flipped over and it rolled off the side of his hand. Had that type of spin on it instead of going right in. But Goose Gabbert with the big play now. He's going to go to the line with a chance to tie this one. Tell you what, Parkersburg South put Traw back right here. Gabbert hits it and ties the game with 2.22 to go. It's 46 all. Smith with it, top of the key. Now gets it over to Blake. And we're going to foul caught on Sinclair underneath the basket. It's his third. Coach Patton saying that he's hooking him, and the, the official's saying, I'll watch it, I'll watch it, so respect by both of them. Austin Reeves under the basket to the inbound, gets it to Troll. Troll's trapped right there, and it gets it up top to Blake, who fires a three, no good. Monquel Davis high in the air for the rebound. Spartans with a chance to take the lead. Here comes Seams pushing the tempo. Seems great pass inside to Huffman. Huffman left-handed, good. 48-46, Greenbar East pulls in front with 1.55 to go. Cam, you can feel the floor shaking under our seats. <laughs> Troll top of the key, pulls up, crosses over seams, and hits it. What a big shot there. <laughs> and Greenbar East coming through the press. So we're going to get a foul. It goes against Blake, his second. Third team foul. And what a shot that was for Troll there. 
He had Adam Seams on him. Seams doing all he could defensively, but Trawl finds enough room to get it, to release it and swishes it through for a, a big go-ahead basket. 49-48. Parkersburg South leads it. 133 to go here in the third quarter as Goose loses it. Blake drives into the lane. Seams smacks oh. it away. They're going to call him for a foul. Got him on the wrist. That'll be Adam's second. Tell you what, Aiden Blake has had a pretty decent third quarter. He came out firing. He has. And he hits the first. If Greenberry's hadn't figured it out yet, you don't want him loose <laughs> with the ball or at the foul line. Absolutely not. Blake will have one more, hits it. 121 to go here in the third. Parkersburg South has built its lead back up to three. It seems on the attack. Finds Goose wide open from the wing. Can't hit it. Battle for the rebound. Goose has it in the corner. Gets it back in the Patton. Now seems to the rim. Lays it up. This time he finishes. <laughs> what a play. 51-50. Back and forth we go. Great play by Traw, too. Not fouling right there. Reeves in the lane, puts it up, can't get it to go, but the rebound is put up and in by Plotner. Go, 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 go. Three-point game once again. Here comes Huffman back on the other end, just too much length for Plotner there, didn't want to challenge him. And here comes Reeves in the paint. Has it knocked away, it's going to be Greenberry's basketball. 38.3 seconds to go, Parkersburg South leading it by three here in the third quarter. Tell you what, Cam, I'm, I don't have the turnover stat with me. I bet both teams are below five. Oh, yeah, has not really taken care of the basketball. Yeah. Just as we say that, yep. turnover, Parkersburg South gets a big block on the other end. Mike Fallon wants a foul. He's lucky he didn't get a technical inside the Huffman, and there's Plotner, and Plotner going to be called for the foul. He doesn't like the call either. If they're lucky, it won't be on trial. It was. No, on Plotner. Plotner. That's his third. Caden Huffman will have a pair. As Mike Fallon pleads his case with the official. He did not like the call on either end of the floor. Huffman rims out on the first one. Second one up and good. 53 51. 25 seconds to go here in the third. Parkersburg South with the ball and a two point lead. Austin Reeves guarded out there by Monquel Davis. Five second call, yes, sir. Timmy Justice whistles the five second. I was watching him count it the whole way. Mike Fallon doesn't like that call either. He is not happy, but Green Bay is going to get the ball with 9.2 seconds to go here in the third, down two. So we talked about turnovers. has been one and then a couple drives and another one. Seems to the rim, scores it. We've got a tie game again, and that's going to do it for our third quarter. We've played three. Nothing decided yet as we're all tied. 53-53, we'll be right back with more on the Green Bay Valley Channel. trillion dollar business. Do you guys understand what the term one pill can kill means? We actually see people who don't make it pretty often. I wouldn't have imagined in middle school that it would be like this big of a deal in high school. The fatal dose is considered two milligrams. If you had 10 tablets in your hand, four of them have that amount. It doesn't care who you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how pretty you are, how ugly you are. It don't discriminate. It's not an overdose, it's poisoning young kids, they can't take the type of dosage that even an adult can. That's how we're ending an overdose. Real questions from West Virginia teens. Answers from the people on the front lines. This is One Pill Can Kill.
I missed it. <laughs> I missed the replay there. I couldn't see it, but I did not look like contact from here. Free throw misses. Seems asking official Jeff Harding exactly what he saw there. But Parkersburg South just gets one out of it. It's 56-53. It's Green Braves basketball there. Timmy Justice says, I'm not sure what the call was exactly. It said he was out of bounds when he touched the ball. So Parkersburg South stole it for just an instant yeah. but was out of bounds. Matter he was trying to tie it up while his foot was out. So Here comes Seams guarded by Reeves. Spartans trail it by three with 7.07 to go. Seams in the lane. Finds Gabbard on the wing. Gabbard going to drive the baseline. And they'll say he stepped out of bounds. Turns over to Parkersburg South. Patriots have a three-point lead and the ball with 6.58 to play. Reeves started by Davis. Green Brace wanted to push off there, didn't get it. Charles spins in the lane. No good. Rebound, Plotner. Plotner goes up and is fouled. Plotner just a matchup nightmare, as we said, Eric, inside. Green Brace has nobody anywhere close to that size. Yeah, you're exactly right. And the thing is, is when you're undersized like that, you got to get position. And we're not, Green Brace is not getting the position. So it's making life even more tough on them. Plotner will go to the line for two. And a lot of things that Patriots have done well tonight, one of them is shoot free throws. Yeah, they've been uh, really good free throw shooters. And tell you, Coach Patton's going to tell Bryson when he comes out, I mean, Caden when he comes out, that you've got to get position on the boards. If you get behind them, it's going to be a foul. Second one is good. It's 58-53. Number two, Patriots lead it by five. Gabbert tried, to throw, Gabbert tried to throw through a trap there, but it bounced off like a pinball off of Parkersburg South out of bounds. I think Parkersburg South's game plan is we're going to press you until you get wore down, and then we're going to come back at you. So Greenbury's has got to find some stamina right here and finish this game out. Davis breaks through it, gets to the rim, left hand, no good. Sinclair with the rebound, puts it off the glass, can't get it to fall. Knocked around. Patton tracks it down. Patton spins in the lane off the glass. No good. Sinclair has it. No good. So Green Brace missed four chances that time down the floor. Oh, wow. And it's going to be a foul called against Parkersburg South's Jackson Smith. That will be his third. Official Greg Fournette was checking on a foul situation. I think each team has 16 fouls right now, so we'll be shooting in next foul. Adam Seams now will inbound underneath the basket. Gets it into Gabbard. Up top to Patton. Spartans swinging it around. Gabbard has the open three, can't knock it down. Parkersburg South trying to push it. And we get the block called there on Monquel Davis. He tried to draw the charge. Yeah. His second foul. And that is seventh team foul, I believe. So. Yeah, I believe uh, Greenberg East. That's seven on them, and then Parkersburg South has six, so we'll be shooting Greenberg East the next foul. So Troll goes to the line. His team has a five-point lead with 6.02 to go. First and for Troll, up and good. 59-53. And he hits the second. 
60 to 53, and Parkersburg South has scored the first seven points of this fourth quarter. Jared Patton wants a timeout. We'll take it with them. 6:02 to go. Parkersburg South leading Greenbury 60 to 53 right here at the Battle for the Springhouse. This is a trillion dollar business. They're cutting it into everything. to 53 lead and Eric how have they done it here in this final quarter um, transition and then of course getting position on the boards we talked earlier about Green Bay East not getting good position and it equals easy layups for these guys and that gets them to the foul line if you're behind them you try to reach over it's a foul so Parkersburg South is really I guarantee the rebounds are off the charts and not to mention as the blocks are too so even Green Bay East is trying to shoot some threes and they're getting blocked so these guys are flying around. Green Bay needs to pump fake somebody, get them in the air, draw the foul, and then get themselves to the line. Yeah, absolutely. They really have had a trouble finding a way to combat the size of Nathan Plotner. He's had a fantastic game on both ends of the floor. But you look at it this way, every time Parkersburg South has made a run so far, Green Bay East has made a run of its own. So see if it's time for that out of the Spartans with 6.02 to go. They trail it by seven. Inbounds pass is knocked away. And that barely missed the cheerleader right over her head. Great reaction by her. <laughs> we talked about the athleticism in the building tonight. We see it there from the Green Berets cheerleaders as well. Is this press looking to have a little more of an impact right now on Green Bar East? Seams tracks it down in the corner. Seams looks over the defense. He's going to drive in the lane. Loses it at the rim. Here comes Parkersburg South on the run. Trial with it against Patton. Puts it up and scores. 62-53, 9 0 run for Parkersburg South. East needs a bucket and a desp- desperately here. 5.30 to go. Got to get across. Shepard spins the lane, turn around, no good. He wanted a foul. Doesn't get it. And this Parkersburg South run may continue. 5-12 to go now. Micah Jones in the lane, scores it. It's too easy. 11 straight points for Parkersburg South. Gabbert in the lane. And we're going to get a foul on the floor. That should be the seventh, so that should send Gabbert to the line. Goes against Austin Reeves. His third foul. And Goose will have a chance to break this 11-0 run. And we're going to get a timeout first. And Eric, you know that's a game of runs. The basketball is always played that way. And, uh, Green Bay East has answered most of the Parkersburg South tonight. Their largest lead was 11 back in the opening quarter. They've built it back up to 11 now with 4.54 to go in the 11-0 run. Goose Gabbert can, can bring that to an end, but uh, that's a bad time for a big run like that if you're Green Bay East. It is. I mean, the good thing for Green Bay East is that they're very capable of making the run themselves. So um, I'm sure both coaches are drawing up some great game plans right here to finish this game out strong. And, um Obviously, you know Parkersburg South, they want to get the ball in the paint. Okay? And Green Bay East needs to go back to doing what they were doing in the first half as far as getting it, getting it before quick, before Parkersburg South gets in the transition defense to score those layups. As fantastic as this game has been, and we've still got five minutes left, a little under five minutes, 4.54 to be exact. One of these teams tomorrow is going to play Shady Spring and one of them is going to play Cabell Middle, and that's going to be two great games again here at the Battle of the Spring. House. Absolutely. You always hear that saying, out of the frying pan into the grease. <laughs> Welcome to it, right? So what what a, a tournament with a bunch of top teams in the state. It's really a great, great venue. I think the good news is for these teams with that is is if you lose this one, one of these teams has to lose, you don't have to think about it for a long time. You can come right back against a, a nice team and, and erase it pretty quickly. Absolutely. You're exactly right. Gabbert's going to go to the line here for a one and one. Greenberg East trails it by 11 now.
He hits the first. Cuts that lead back down to 10, and he'll have one more to try to make it single digits once again. And he does. 64-55 on the Gabbert pair from the line. Parkersburg South Reeves has it, gets it off to Trawl. He's been super tough tonight. Micah Jones with it now back to Reeves. Aiden Blake trying to get it in the lane, and as he drives, Monquel Davis tried to knock it away, but instead he's going to be whistled for a foul. It'll be his third. So you, we watch a lot of basketball, and a lot of teams run that weave offense, right, and then go downhill with it. But it's so hard for young athletes to move over and stop that penetration. Everybody wants to slap at it and get that foul. Hayden Blake's going to go to the line for his one and one, hits it. Parkersburg South has been big at the line tonight. They sure have. Just scamming through. They've, I see they've missed four all night. So, And he hits again. 66-55. Seems going to push the tempo. Gets it to Monquell. Now back out. Gabbard open for a three from the wing. Hits it. <laughs> Don't want to leave the goose open on the wing. And he hits it to make it 58-66. All right. Green Brace gets a stop here. And score back within six. So, 0-5. But instead, Blake's nice behind-the-back move, puts the runner up in the lane and scores it. See, Blake's had himself a game tonight. A lot of it's been at the foul line, but he's done well. Four minutes to go now. Spartans trail it by 10. And we're going to get a foul called on Parkersburg South's Jackson Smith, and I believe that's four. Yep, that's four on him. That's going to send Davis to the line. Need these with the clock stopped if you're Green Bear East. As Davis misses. Coming up next, Green Bear East girls against Bingo Central. Our final game of the evening here at Colonial Hall in the battle for the Springhouse. Blake drives in against Goose. Hands off to Plotner who scores. 70 to 58. Gabbert tries to answer. He needs that one. Can't get it to go. Parkersburg South with a rebound. Pushing the tempo. Here comes Plotner right down the lane. Yams it home. Wow. He's had a big game. Blocks and everything. You knew at some point he's going get, to get loose for one. 72 to 58. Parkersburg South looks to have control now. As Seams gets in the lane, puts it up, no good. Fight for the rebound, can't get it. Now, if you're Parkersburg South, you're fine letting that clock run. Three minutes to go. And ball's turned over. Careless pass there with a the big lead for Parkersburg South. Seams pull up jumper, misses everything. And on the rebound, Cyrus Charles is going to be fouled, and he'll go to the other end of the floor to shoot free throws. Yep. Let's, let's take a look back at the run down the lane for the slam right here. Little Euro step there, then finds him right at the foul line, takes one step and launches into the air, throws it down. Great play by Parkersburg South. 6'8", senior, has been huge here tonight. Great, great awareness by uh, the young man to find him in the transition, too. Absolutely. Green Bay is going to take a timeout. We'll take it with him. 2.45 to go. Parkersburg South leads at 72-58 at the Battle for the Springhouse.
Parkersburg South went on an 11-0 run to open up this fourth quarter and has outscored Green Berets 19-5 so far here in this final frame to take control of this game. It was a fantastic three quarters, but Parkersburg South showing why it's the number two team in the state here in the final frame as they've pulled away a little bit now. Crawl to the line. Misses on his first. That's Adam a rare. Seems, gets the rebound. Green Brace working it around the perimeter, looking for the shot. Clock is ticking. It's down to 230. On Quell Davis drives, kicks the seams. Now back up top to Bramer for a three. No good. And Plotner there to control the rebound as he's done all night. We're going to get a travel call, though, against Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves did, certainly did not like that call. Huffman tries to shoot over Plotner. Can't do that. The long arms are just too long. And Parkersburg South gets the rebound. Here comes Reeves back on the other end. And driving the lane, puts it up the glass and scores. Parkersburg yeah, South feeling down. itself a little bit now as they score once again to make it 74 to 58. The goose for a three hits it. He's knocked to the floor, no call there. 74-61. Green Brace wanted to walk, couldn't get a call. Here's Jones in the lane, gets it to Plotner, who slams one home again. Tell you what, there was a double dribble right there the official missed. Green Brace coach is encouraging the team to keep playing. Don't worry about the score. Keep playing your basketball. 1.27 to go. Parkersburg South lead is 15. It's been a closer game than what the scoreboard is going to indicate at the end of this one. Yeah, absolutely. We talked about how Parkersburg South just wants to wear you down and then sort of use their momentum at the end of the game. But. Patton air balls a three. Reeves clears the rebound. Reeves in the lane. Parkersburg South is going to eat the clock now. We're down to 54 seconds to go. Reeves by Patton, gets to the rim, and scores it. 78-61. Going to foul on the other end. And Eric, if you're Greenberg East, uh, what do you take out of this one? You played the number two team in the state. Pretty even for three quarters. Um, let them pull away a little bit at the end, but I guess you don't have too long to lick your wounds. As tomorrow you're going to have to be right back at it. No, absolutely. I mean, you got to continue to play and do, do what you're good at right here. Finish out the game and then, hey, go get some rest, regroup. You play early tomorrow and get after it. But like we've talked about, the bad news is for South, they got Shady Springs sitting here watching them, ready for them. Yeah, the two teams that we'll see tomorrow – we're underneath the basket on either side. Shady, I think, has, has left now, but we did have Shady Spring to the right of the basket, Cavill Midland to the – or, excuse me, Shady Spring to the left, Cavill Midland to the right. Easy for me to know my left from right. Gabbard at the <laughs> foul line knocks it down. 78-63. Consolation game tomorrow will be – at 3 o'clock for the boys, so it's like Greenbrier East and Cabell Midland will play in that one. Championship game for the boys will be at 5 o'clock tomorrow. As Seams misses on the three. Davis with the rebound underneath. Bucket and a foul. As we were saying, the championship game in the boys' side will be 5 o'clock. Looks like now that will be Parkersburg South against Shady Spring. That should be a fantastic basketball game. Adam Seam's going to check out. He played a fantastic game, did his best to keep the Spartans in this one. 
Davis to finish off the three-point play, and he hits it. 78-66. Silvis has it stolen away. Here's Monquill to Bramer. Bramer for three, hits it. 69-78. And Green Marie's going to call a timeout. Eric, we'll keep it right here with them as they, they – take this time out. Just 10 seconds to go. Obviously, the, the outcome is pretty much decided, but good to see Greenberries continue to fight on its end of the floor and knock down a couple big shots there. Yeah, definitely. We're, we're just like we just talked about a second ago, do what you're good at. Don't quit. Finish the game out, and Greenberries is definitely doing that. 10.5 seconds left on the clock. Parkersburg South, they've been impressive, Eric, and you've seen, and we mentioned that championship game tomorrow, Parkersburg South against Shady Spring. I know you've seen Shady a couple times this season, getting a chance to see Parkersburg South today. Should be an interesting matchup for sure. Oh, it definitely is. I mean, there's a lot of athleticism on both teams and great basketball players. So, And great coaches, too. Both teams are uh, great coaches. I mean, if you look at that tomorrow, you've got a state champion and Coach Olson. And then, of course, Coach Fallon played in the state championship last year against, uh, I believe, Morgantown and came up a little bit short. But lots of seasoned veterans playing tomorrow afternoon. Absolutely. If you don't have your tickets yet, go to greenbury.com. You can get them in advance. It's going to be a, a big crowd for sure, so you want to get them now. For early all of the games tomorrow. Donovan Penn in the game. He wants to get his name in the scorebook, so he picks up a foul there. Seth Meadows is going to go to the line. His first miss is too strong. He'll have one more. Again, make sure you tune in right here in the Greenbrier Valley Channel for the final game this evening. Green Berets girls against Mingo Central. As the second one misses and the corn will sound, that's going to end it. Final score, Parkersburg South 78, Green Berets 69 here at the Battle for the Springhouse. We'll be back in just a moment to wrap it up and tell you all about this one and what's coming up next. Stay with us on the Green Bar Valley Channel. Mountains and the trees make our area some of the most scenic in the nation, but they also present a challenge to Appalachian Power supplying energy. More than half of our customers' power outages are caused by trees falling onto our power lines. That's why we dedicate more than 1,600 full-time workers to manage vegetation. Each year, we clear more than 5,000 miles along our rights of way to keep service safe and reliable. Every day, I work to keep trees away from our power lines. It's an important part of Appalachian Power's commitment to keep your energy service reliable. Yep. Back here at the Battle for the Spring House, wrapping up game number three, Parkersburg South, the 78-69 winner over Greenbrier East. Tied at the end of the third quarter, 53 all, and Parkersburg South goes on an 11-0 run to take control, and they win it going away, 78-69. And Eric Workman now has the final stats for today's game. All right, we'll start with the winners. Uh, Parkersburg South Patriots, Austin Reeves finished with 11. Cyrus Traw, leader of the game with 23. Jackson Smith, two. Nathan Plotner with, my guess would be close to a double-double tonight with 15 points. I didn't keep the rebound stats or blocks, but he had, he was up close to 10 in both of those. Um, Aiden Blake, 16. Cole Joy, two. Silvis, nine. And then Micah Jones finishes with two. And then we're going to go to the Greenbury East side. Adam Seams finished double digits with 11. Goose Gabbert close to 
uh, leader of the game for both teams, but it ends with 24. Caden Huffman with five. Chris Sinclair, six. Bryson Brammer, five. Monquel Davis had a good game at 10 in double digits. Then Gabe Patton comes in at four. Um, that's going to give us the, the wrap-up for the game, the third game of the night. And we'll be back shortly with the final game, Greenberg East Lady Spartans versus the Mingo Central Lady Miners. Sports in the Greenbrier fit together like peaches and iced tea. Over the years, America's Resort has hosted some incredible sporting events, including the Ryder Cup, Solheim Cup, the PGA Tour, professional boxing, and training camps for NFL and NBA teams. From Sam Snead to Tom Brady and from Lou Gehrig to Tiger Woods, sports' biggest stars have walked the iconic hallways of the Greenbrier or the fairways of the Old White. Last February, a new tradition began with the inaugural Battle for the Spring House, bringing basketball inside the Grand Colonial Hall for the first time for a setting that is truly unmatched. Now it's time for an encore as some of the top high school teams in the Mountain State return to this hallowed venue for year number two. The field this year features the best of the best with four girls powers and four boys powers from every corner of the state going to battle with the ultimate goal of bringing the Spring House Trophy back to their schools. The competition will be fierce, but this weekend is about more than basketball. It's a chance for these student athletes to experience one of West Virginia's true treasures. It's an opportunity to learn about the centuries of history that have taken place on these 11,000 acres. And most of all, it's about making memories that will last long after their athletic careers come to a close. So as the Green Bar guests enjoy bunker tours, afternoon tea, and the lobster mashed potatoes at Prime 44, the Green Bar Valley Channel is proud to take you courtside in Colonial Hall. Every dribble, pass, shot, steal, and buzzer beater can be found right here as these talented athletes give their all for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's game time at the 2023 Battle for the Springhouse. 